Hallelujah. This morning I want to talk to you. My, the title of my message is Knowing God's Voice. Do you know his voice? Some of you, do you know God's voice? It's, 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 it's something that a lot of um, Christians struggle with. A lot of the times we want someone else to tell us um, what God is saying concerning our lives. But I want to help you this morning to get you to the place where you can hear from God for yourself. And not be wondering, is that God? Is that me? Is that the devil? Amen? So this morning, I want to speak to you about knowing God, God's voice for yourself. Because when we come to know um, what God's voice is, we'll understand what his will is concerning our lives. Have you ever asked um, somebody um, or wondered what God's will is for you? Anyone ever wondered what God's will is for their life? Just a few of you. The rest of you don't care. Do you ever wonder what God's will is? Do you ever ask God, what's your will for my life? Do you, do you think God has a plan for your life? Amen. Are you interested in knowing? Some of you, you at the back, are you interested in knowing God's will? Anyone at the back? Anyone over here? Are you interested in knowing God's will for your life? Just one or two hands. We, this is something that every believer should desire. God, what is your will for my life? Because if I don't know your will, I'm not going to fulfill your will. If I don't know what God expects from me, anyone out there? See, how can I fulfill what he has for me if I don't know? It's like a husband and wife. How can a husband fulfill his wife's desires if he never takes the time to ask her? How can he fulfill her dreams if he never takes the time to ask her? How can you wives fulfill your husband's dreams and desires if you never take the time to ask him? Presumption causes us to miss every time. But you know what? There's nothing like knowing for sure without a shadow of a doubt what the will of God is for our lives. Amen? But the question that we should be asking before we get to knowing the will of God is knowing the voice of God. Because God, knowing God's voice results in finding God's will. Amen? I've got a lot of scripture for you today. I need you to move fast and I need you to write them down because I want you to study this throughout this week. Turn in your Bibles with me right now to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 5. Well, I'm going to back up a little bit while you're finding your place in Ephesians. I'm going to um, just read a couple of verses from the beginning of that chapter from Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 1 says, um, Be imitators of God, therefore, as, dear as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But among you... There must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place but rather thanksgiving for of this you can be sure no immoral, impure or greedy persons such a man is an idolater. Now skip down to the verse that, um, that I, um, I've given you, verse 17. It says, therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The reason I read to you the beginning of that chapter is because this gives us a little insight concerning what God's will is for us individually. Remember I said to you at the beginning, knowing God's voice, you'll know his will. What's God's voice? The Bible. This is God's voice and God's will concerning each and every one of us is that there should not be even a hint of sexual immorality amongst us. So, God, so we know just off the, off the cuff right there that God's will concerning you and I is that we do not live in sexual immorality. So if you ever had a shadow of a doubt concerning sex outside of marriage, God's will is that you don't. Amen. If you don't say amen, I think then you're, you're in, the, this is you. I said God's will is that there should not even be a hint of sexual immorality amongst us. 
Amen. We're getting there. See, this question is perhaps one of the most common, often asked, uh, especially in the role of um, being a pastor. Um, my husband and myself, oftentimes people come to us, especially when it comes to choosing the person that you want to get married to. God's, God, is this your will for my life concerning this individual? Anyone ever ask that? How many times do people walk, or Christians, I should say, walk up the aisle with that certain individual and you are not 100% sure this is God's will? Don't, you don't have to raise your hands there. But you know, these are things that people, how many times do we venture into things and we're not even sure, is this God's will for my life? In everyday situations of life, we are constantly making choices which determines whether or not we'll do the will of God. Every single day, every moment of our day, we are making choices concerning whether we are doing the will of God or not. It is essential for you and I as believers to know God's voice, to understand God's will, and to make right decisions every day. How many of you would like to make the right decisions every day? When we, when we understand what God's will is, we're going to be able to do that. Amen? It's especially important because even the most minor decisions will affect you for a lifetime. It doesn't matter how small the pebble is that you chuck in the, in the ocean or in the lake, it still makes a ripple. Whatever decisions that you make in your life, it doesn't just affect you. Every decision that you make will affect those around you. And sometimes those decisions will affect generations to come, good or bad. The choices that you make. The decisions that you make concerning your life is going to affect the person in, next to you, the person in your family, the person that's connected to you. And if, if we understand the impact of the things that we do, and the impact of the choices that we make, even when we're dead and gone, if we understand the gravity of it, we'll, be, we'll, be more, we'll take more time to make sure that we're doing the right things. How many of us today are living out because of the decisions that our fathers or our grandfathers make, good or bad? How many of us are living in the repercussion of bad choices that were made by other people when, um, concerning our lives or that were connected to our lives? Would we not wish that they had thought it through a little bit better before they done it. One thing I've learned is it's, it's easy to get into something, but it is one hard thing to undo what you get into. When it, it's, it's easy to say, yes, I'll do that, and you do that, but try, try and get out of it. So it's, it's important that we make sure when we go into things, we know that this is God's will concerning our lives. 